Wondering how your mindset affects your life? How to bring more energy into your business and life? Millions of people around the world ask these same questions daily. You are in the right place. Learn practices that will help give your life the meaning and success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Charge Podcast, teaching you how to create habits around real goals every day. Practical life advice from those who made it. Here's your host, Gary Wilbers. When running a small business, you face new challenges every day. There are so many distractions during the daily grind. You feel overwhelmed and frustrated. Everyone should have the ability to reach their full potential in business and life. The Ascend Mastermind Peer Advisory Board will give you access to other like-minded individuals to share your challenges with and hold you accountable. It will help you move from stagnant to growth and give you more freedom in your business and life. Each quarter, we'll tackle a new area of the positive culture blueprint, health, connections, wealth, and even contributions. Imagine your business growing without you being stuck in the day-to-day operations. Imagine your next family vacation and you're fully present. Imagine having the freedom and flexibility you desired when you became a business owner. It's time to move from your imagined future and turn it into reality. You can have it all, a profitable business, impactful relationship, and even family time. So go to thechargepodcast.com and click on the link for your free discovery call to see if you qualify for the Ascend Mastermind today. Welcome, Chargers. We're glad to have you back again this week. I'm telling you, 2022 keeps moving along. We're already in that month of March, so things just keep rolling along. But the thing is, we like to bring different guests on this podcast to give you different viewpoints. And we're going to take a little different angle today, and I'm kind of excited to have this guest on. But before I introduce him, I want you to tell us, if you would, Chuck, what problem do you solve for our Chargers? Well, I help people clarify who their audience is, who they're trying to reach, and then put out a podcast that basically helps them reach the people that they know they want to reach so that they can grow their business. See why I'm excited about this podcast? We're going to take a little different angle than we have in the past. And Charles, I'm just curious. There's three questions that you're going to answer for our chargers today. What are those three questions that you're going to answer? Well, we're going to talk about how to attract your ideal customer with a podcast. We're going to talk about why podcasting works maybe over other media like YouTube or blogging. And then we're going to answer how to set up your podcast to convert those listeners into podcast listeners or into customers. Sorry. Excellent. So this is going to be a fun one and you're going to get to see an inner working. So maybe you say, I don't have a podcast. Well, this may help you think that you should do one, but maybe if nothing else, you're going to learn some inner workings of podcasting and why we're doing it. So keep tuned because I think you can still learn something from it. And I'm so excited to have Charles Maxwood. And I said Chuck because I know Chuck individually Mm because we're in a mastermind group together. So you're going to hear me go back and forth probably. He's been in podcasting for over 13 years. What did some of us didn't even know it was born yet. And so, man, he really goes back and he's produced over 3,500 podcasts across 20 different shows. So he has an experience in this area and I'm so excited to have you on and as a fellow masterminder and stuff. So Chuck, it is great to have you on the charge podcast. Welcome. Yeah, it's terrific to be here. It's always fun to see what people are doing with their podcasts, who they're reaching and how I can help. Well, I am so excited about this because number one, I think I can learn, but I think all, everyone can learn from it. And I think for a lot of, I have a lot of small business owners and a lot of times they think, oh, this is for someone else. But the thing is, you can really create a podcast for yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's really the first question I think we wanted to get into is really, how can you attract that ideal customer with a podcast? Can you share us some tips there? Yeah, absolutely. So just just to back up, on that question for a minute. Sure. It really comes down to understanding your audience, right? Mm. And you'll you'll hear this from a lot of the other podcast experts out there. You need to understand your audience and you need to know who you're trying to target as your audience. But even before that, you need to know who that customer is, right? Who who is going to buy the product that you're putting out there, right? Who who do you need to be getting in front of 
in order to make this work, right? Because if you're just putting a podcast out there and you get popular and you're in front of the wrong people, it's not going to help you out, right? And so there, there's kind of two aspects to this. And one is, who do I want to be in front of? And then what can I put out there that's valuable to them to keep them coming back? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, what you're looking to do, and people say no like and trust, and I, I kind of like that. It's a little bit cliche at this point, but the, the way they get to know, like, and trust you is because you are, they feel, talking about things in a way that they identify with. Or in other words, you're telling their story is the way that I like to put it. So, you know, you're, you're saying, hey, this is stuff that happens. And they go, yeah, I've been through that. Or this is something that I've been through. And they're like, yeah, I anticipate that I will go through that, right? And so they can see that as part of their story. And that's when they start to identify with you because they're saying, this person has gone through things that I either anticipate that I will go through or is going through things that I'm going through, right? And so so they understand me and then they understand my problem and then they can provide a solution to that problem. And that's where the no like, and trust really comes in is because they feel like you know them, they know you, they like you, they feel like you like them and they can trust you to solve their problem because you're already there. Yeah, I think that becomes really key. And I really like how you set that up because when we understand our audience, you know, we can't be everything to everybody. And we hear this in marketing all the time. And podcasting is really a medium of marketing. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. And I mean, even the entertainment uh, podcasts, I mean, they're, they're selling something. Usually it's kick back and enjoy the story. Um, but they're putting ideas out there. there. There are a lot of things that go into it. But at this point, yeah, a lot of the other podcasts out there, they're selling something. They might be selling advertising. Or they may be selling, hey, come work with me. Or, you know, maybe they're just trying to build a reputation, but they're getting something out of it. And so are you. And that's the whole idea. Yeah, that becomes really the key because I think it's why do you want to do podcasting? And then who's that audience that you're at? But then I guess the question really, you said number two that you would answer if someone's thinking about they want to start a podcast. Why really think about podcasting over other medias? So there are kind of two other things that people generally, when I talk to them, they're considering. Uh, one is blogging. And I mean, I can, I can answer that one real quick. I mean, blogging is highly competitive and it's hard to get found. Okay. So people go to blogging because it's easy, right? Because you can just sit down and you can type it out, right? You can have somebody proofread it, you know, and, and it feels safe. But the reality is, is you're just not going to connect with people the way that you need to on a blog. And it's really, really hard to find new people. Uh, the podcasts have the podcast directories. Uh, they're built into the apps that people use to listen to them. And so it makes it really easy for you to get found if you have the right keywords in your descriptions, titles, and things like that. Um, when it comes down to YouTube and things like that, it's a little bit different argument. And you can be effective on YouTube, but there are two issues that I see with YouTube. One is, is that in order for me to consume YouTube, the way that it's designed to be consumed, I have to be sitting at a device where I can watch a video. And if I'm driving down the road, I mean, I can just listen to the podcast. So that's one reason. But the other thing is, is podcasting really is storytelling. Okay. Mm. There's just no way around it. The, the podcasts that really, really get a lot of listens are people who are telling a story. They're putting out a narrative. Um, I mean, even the, the news and things like that, you know, it's part of an ongoing narrative and you, you may be picking it up from a couple of different people, but they're all feeding into that narrative and telling you a story. And YouTube seems to be going more and more towards shorter, more punchy content that really doesn't have a whole lot of substance to it. Now you can do longer content that has more substance to it, but it's hard to get traction that way. And so if you're putting out an hour long podcast, and you're telling a good story, and you're really giving people that thing that they're looking for as far as, hey, this person is solving my problem, you know, or telling me how to solve the problem, or is talking about things in a way that's interesting to me, you can go for longer because people will listen to it for however long it takes. And if they need to take a break, they just turn their podcast app back on and they pick up right where they left off. And so really, I think that's the kicker is you get that storytelling opportunity. And I'm going to come back to that over and over and over again, because that's really what we're talking about here. It's not podcasting, it's storytelling. Podcasting is just the delivery mechanism. But when your story and their story align, 
that's where you really get people on board. And that's where you get people to identify with you. And that's what you're after. I mean, if you're trying to build anything, that's what you're after. Yeah, I think that becomes the real key is really in podcasting is who are you talking to? We talked about earlier, but then what story mm -hmm. are you telling them? And that's where sometimes we have to adjust. I mean, you've done this over 13 years and over 3,500 yep. podcasts. I'm sure you've adjusted over these 13 years in how you approach it. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes it's a major thing, right? I mean, I went through a social media canceling that was no fun back in 2019, right? That changed the way I tell my story. Um, you know, I was a newish programmer when I started podcasting and as my career advanced, I mean, there were, there were small things that changed my story, but as I went through it and I talked to people about it and talked to people about what I was learning and talked to people about what was going on in my life, a lot of times they, those were the same things that they were going through, or maybe they were a step or two behind me and saw it coming up. And so they could envision that as part of their future story. And that's why they found what, what I was talking about valuable. Yeah, I think that becomes a really key is what is the value that you're bringing to them? You know, I bring problem solvers on, I call mm -hmm. on this podcast, you know, um, we haven't had somebody on talking about podcasting. I do it all the time but no one to talk about it. And that's why I said yes, because not only do I know um, Chuck, but also I know what he's going to share. It makes you think because the other thing I would tell people is they think it's only for speakers, authors, and coaches. And I disagree wholeheartedly. I think it's for people that really want to get a message out. You could be, mm -hmm. you could create a podcast that just is in a local market and you're doing it for your business for people to understand that no matter what you're selling. Yeah, that's something actually I've actually uh, done off and on for the last little while. I'm pretty involved in politics here in Utah. And, you know, you're talking about a few million people, I mean, across the whole state. Um, but the reality is, is there are things that go on here that matter to me. And so, yeah, we've done that. And I, I like the way that you frame that because, yeah, your story, the way you, you tell the story and why you're telling the story is to affect some kind of change, Right. Now, it may be in a small group of people, it might be in a larger group of people, it may be people who identify one way or another, but at the end of the day, I mean, that's really what we're trying to do is we're trying to create that movement. We're trying to move people to make a change that matters. Now, it may be a change that matters, again, you know, in this local area with, with local politics, or it may be, hey, I feel fulfilled every time somebody goes and takes their business to the next level, or maybe it's I really want to help people at a deeper level. And so I can help people at, at the more superficial level they get by listening to me for an hour or half hour at a time. But then they'll come and I can coach them and I help them move along more quickly. And that's fulfilling to me. But whatever that is, it, it is a movement. You're trying to get people to actually take action. Yeah, that, that, that's the real key is getting them to take action. And then, then as we kind of talked about the other media, the one thing I think is so unique about podcasting that you talked about is really there's no other median that you can have that really it goes, can go everywhere with them because they get mm -hmm. it on their phone. So, you know, I can have it in my vehicle if I want. I can yep. have it like this morning when I was exercising and doing my run this morning, I was able to have a podcast on. It goes with that person everywhere. And that becomes the real difference where a lot of medians, like you said, if you're on YouTube and you show it there and you have to watch it, yeah, you can listen to it, but normally it's not going to come across the same where a podcast just has so many availability. And mm -hmm. I will tell my listeners, because I call them chargers for a reason, is it's well, the one time you can create the content, you can receive the content you want to receive, and you can mm -hmm. be educating yourself all the time in whatever medium that you want when you're doing activities that you like. Yeah, I think there are two important things that you pointed out. One is, is that, I mean, there's stuff out there for everything, right? Yeah. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm not going to try and, you know, cast any judgments one way or the other, but a lot of people are upset about some of the stuff that Joe Rogan said on his podcast, right? Well, the reality is, is there's stuff about all of the things he talks about all across the spectrum. And so the wonderful thing is, is there's probably something out there for you, whether you agree with Joe Rogan or Joe, you know, Joe Blow, I mean, whoever, right? The other thing though, that's terrific about this, and, and I really want to drive home, is that when I go to a conference or, you know, to a meetup or something like that, I mean, I think the last time this happened to me, my wife and I went to a Cafe Rio, we were getting Mexican food, right? And I was wearing a hoodie 
that had the logo for one of my podcasts. And this guy looks at me and goes, I listened to that show. And I said, really? Well, you know, who do you like on it? And he goes, you're Charles Max Wood, aren't you? <laughs> right? Because he knew I was local. And I said, yeah. And so we start talking and immediately he goes, I feel like I know you. Right. And, and that's, that's the other kicker, right? Is that you kind of become the friend that people carry around in their pocket. Yeah, that's excellent. I appreciate you sharing that. So tell us, you know, for people that are really getting started or they've thought about this thought of getting started, how do you really set up your podcast? Uh, number one, give a little bit of detail if you would there, but really the thing that they want to do is they want to convert those listeners to podcasters. Um, how right. do they do that? So the trick, there are a couple of things, uh, but the big trick is, is convincing them that you can solve their problem, right? And that it's worth whatever they're going to pay to do it. You know, if, you, if you're looking to convert them to paying customers. Um, I really like some of the stuff that's been put out by Russell Brunson as far as like a value ladder. So, you know, maybe you're charging uh, 10 bucks for an ebook and then you're maybe 100 bucks for, you know, something a little more involved and then 500 bucks, you know, for an hour of coaching. Um, but at the end of the day, what you're really doing is you are telling that story, convincing people that you can bring the value and then basically the last thing you do is you point out the pain, right? The pain of staying where they're at, the pain of not doing anything, or, you know, maybe the pain of not knowing what to do next. Uh, there are a lot of areas where you can kind of push this, but when they start to realize, hey, look, I can get what I want by working with Gary or, you know, with whoever, you know, with one of the other chargers that listen to the show, um, that's that's when they come in and are ready to buy. And so then you basically lead them along to, and this is what's going to solve your problem, you know, whether it's coaching or whether it's a mastermind or whether it's some other thing, uh, that's where you start to make that connection. And if you can connect with them in other ways, this is the other part of it, is if you can connect with them in other ways, then that also helps. And specifically what I'm talking about here is an email list is probably the easiest way to go, right? So you get people to come to your website, you get them to sign up for an email list, you send them some kind of freebie. I mean, this isn't rocket science. You know, you email them on a regular basis so that again, they're getting reinforced in their email with the message you put into your podcast. The difference is, is you can start keeping track of who's opening the emails, how in, how engaged are they? You don't get those numbers off of the podcast, but you can get them from your email system. And then you can start tailoring the content toward that. The last thing that I want to really point out is that I have my listeners get on calls with me on a regular basis. Okay. And, you know, sometimes I try and sell them coaching. Sometimes I just help them for 20 minutes and then we get off the call. But I know what my listeners need, right? I know what they want. I know what they're struggling with. I know some of the concerns they have. And so then when I start tailoring my products and my messaging toward those things, I get people who immediately identify with it, immediately want that solution. And they, those are the people that are then coming back and getting reinforced through the email list and I'm getting to buy. And so it's all kind of this circular thing because if you can if you can get into a place where you're actually getting feedback from your listeners and it it you know if you have a uh, an audience of say 500 people which is by most standards a huge audience by the way um a lot of people see you know this person has millions of listeners those people are the exception they're not the they're not the rule the rule is is you have like 100 200 people listening to your show right but if you can get one or two of them on every couple of months where you're talking to them, whether you're interviewing them for the show or getting that feedback, that's going to tell you everything you need to know about who you're reaching and what they need and what you can put out there that's going to make a difference. And and then you can say, okay, well, I have the solution and you, you can get the solution by joining my mailing list, right? And so you bring them back around to that. And then from there, it's, okay, well, you got the freebie. Do you want the paid course or the audio book or, you know, whatever. And you can kind of upsell them from there and convert, convert them to customers. But at the end of the day, it really just boils down to understanding who they are and what they want, and what you have to offer that's going to solve the problems that they have and then helping them recognize the pain they're in so that they can get it solved. 
Yeah, it becomes a real key because it's really, it's part of the marketing cycle is really what it mm-hmm. is. It's just yep. a different marketing cycle in other ways that you do things. Instead, you're doing it through the podcast, but you're, you're bringing them in to your, you know, business through the opportunities they have mm-hmm. available. I mean, I've been doing this. I've been promoting for the um, last couple months, success and hiring. It's a free five video format with all the workbooks that I give exactly free. But the reason Mm -hmm. I'm doing it is for business owners. They're struggling right now in what area of hiring people. Oh yeah. Everywhere. We've got to do a better job of hiring, but it doesn't just cover hiring. It covers about recruiting. It covers about, you know, the whole gamut of the side of it. Because why? Because then it shows my expertise that I want to help that because I know small business owners listen to my podcast and they struggle in this area. Then of course, what do I want to do? I want to be able to offer some of the other services. Mm -hmm. You know, I started a mastermind in January um, that I have a virtual mastermind. We're in a mastermind together. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to maybe, if you don't mind, kind of play this out a little bit, Charles, if you don't mind. And maybe if you would share with me, why do you belong to a mastermind? What do you get out of it? Boy, where do I start? Mm -hmm. I mean... It's interesting, too, because I've been in a number of different masterminds. I'm currently in two masterminds, by the way. Um, And the the mastermind that we're in, I was actually in it. I quit it, and then I came back. (laughs) So uh, there's a bit of story there. And, uh, you know, for for the sake of time, you know, I'll I'll spare a lot of that. But um, ultimately, what it is, is I know what I get from the, the people that are there, right? So for the one mastermind that we're in, I get a lot of personal reinforcement as well as, you know, business and, you know, personal help on that. Right. So we talk about all kinds of stuff. Um, But a lot of times it's for the advice, right? Because a lot of the guys in there are a little older than I am. They've been through some things that I haven't. um, And they just have a different perspective on things that they, they offer to me. But a lot of times what it really boils down to is, just the having people that I feel like understand me. And I also get a lot of fulfillment from um, contributing to other people, right? And so it, it's a little bit of both. Um, I think the main thing and the reason that I came back to the mastermind that we're in in particular um, was about four years ago, my dad passed away. And um, it really, it really shook me up. Right. It, it was it was really hard. And at the time, I really wasn't in a mastermind. I was in a business mastermind, but we did not talk about any of the personal stuff at all. And um, it wasn't long after that that I ran into uh, Aaron Walker and, um, you know, I was like, I need to come back. Right. I, I need this personal reinforcement in my life that you know, there's a reason for all this stuff. And and I'm a person of faith. And, you know, so, so I, I knew it, but I just, I needed people around me that were saying it right. And, and that really believed it. And so I came back and, and kind of fell in with the group of guys that we talked to every week. And one of the guys in particular, Steve was just super encouraging and, you know, and we talk and we, we kind of figure this out and he, he really helped me get through a lot of it. Right. And so it's, it's down to that, that personal level of, of stuff. I mean, some of the other business masterminds, honestly, um, I've contributed to other people's businesses and they've contributed to mine. We've done joint ventures. Um, sometimes it's just, Hey, I'm using this tool. You ought to look at it. Um, you know, or, Hey, I solved this problem in this way. You know, they'll ask me questions about podcasting or this, that, or the other. And, you know, we, we just reinforce each other that way. And that's a really powerful way to get further ahead in business. But what I found is that the biggest payoff is honestly just having people that I can go to when I need to for any level of things that I need. And yeah, you know, some of the masterminds are more one than the other, but the reality is, is that it's, it's a powerful way to move forward in any area that you have a mastermind that you're willing to, you know, contribute to each other on. And then finally, the other thing is, is um, I like to win and I don't like to admit defeat. And so if I tell my mastermind that I'm going to do something, I find it really hard to not do it because 
I don't want to go back and say, well, sorry, guys, I didn't do it this week, and here's why. And so unless I can go back and basically say, you know, this completely upended my life this week, right, I, I get a level of accountability out of it that, that is really helpful as well. So yeah, I was kind of all over the place. But, yeah, that, that's essentially why I'm in a mastermind yeah. and why I can't imagine not being in one. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that because I think some of our audience do, has not been in. Of course, I have a solution to that. Um, would love yep. to talk to them about that because that's what I'm trying to create is some of it is accountability, but it's also for us to be able to get real with each other mm -hmm. personally and professionally. And today, I'll be quite honest, that's a challenge. And you have to have people that have your back. And the biggest thing is if we're a business owner, really, we're not accountable to anyone. We're accountable mm -hmm. to our business, but we're not really accountable to anyone. But what happens is we get in those ruts and what being around other people and other business owners do, it allows you to get out of that rut because you see what mm -hmm. they're doing and it allows you to move forward in your life. And I think it really takes you from that stagnant side of it. And some of people may be feeling that now, but if you want to instead feel not feel stagnant, instead of want to feel that growth side, that's what a mastermind can do for you. So please um, just check it out. If it's mine, if, if it's not mine, someone's, because I know it can be beneficial to you, but make sure it matches up. Mm -hmm. I think Charles, you said that the best is make sure it matches up to what you really want to get out of the mastermind. Same thing we were talking mm -hmm. about for podcasting. So we may have veered just a little bit here in this podcast, but it's still the same thing. Are you getting out of it what you right. really want out of that opportunity? I know Charles, you said you had a, um, something that you were willing to share with the podcasters that we'll put in the show notes there. And also if you would give them your website and information, and then I've got two questions before we go to the recharge round. Yeah, absolutely. So um, if you go to podcastplaybook.co slash charge podcast, um, then you can actually get on my mailing list. Um, beyond just the kind of daily advice that I give out for podcasters, uh, the other thing that you, you can get there, you'll get my setup guide. And so I'll walk you through how to set up your podcast so that it attracts people. Because ultimately, um, the first thing that you get out of podcasts and, and how to get people onto your podcast, they go search the directory. So they see your artwork, your title, your description, stuff like that. And so there are specific things that you can do that set you up so that they will actually click it, right? And a lot of that comes down to knowing your audience again. But I, I have a series of questions that I ask that help people figure that out. And then I also help you not screw up your artwork, right? Don't put your face on it. It was kind of my first rule, right? So um, it'll kind of walk you through, oh, okay, this is this this is attractive artwork that's going to make people want to click it. Um, and yeah, it's all at podcastplaybook.co. Um, most of my podcasts are actually about software. And so if you're look, working on your software career and you happen to listen to this show, uh, you can also go to topendevs.com. But um, yeah, I mean, all the podcast stuff is po podcastplaybook.co. Excellent. I appreciate you sharing that. And I'm going to go to it myself because I think we need to update our artwork um, and do some different things there because we've been kind of adjusting and moving the podcast and I need to really mm -hmm. kind of attract that ideal audience that I'm looking for. So I appreciate that information. I'll be looking for it myself. Well, before I let you go, I always ask two guests in what I call the recharge round, two questions. The first one, of course, the um, podcast is named Charge, but that's my mantra, create habits mm -hmm. around real goals every day. What Ooh, habit I love that. Do you, thank you. What habit do you think has led to success in your life? Uh, <laughs> I, sh I should have been more prepared for this. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, the, the biggest thing that lately has made the biggest difference is just um, enabling other people to help me out, right? So, you know, you mentioned hiring. That has been so key for everything that I do. And so, you know, hiring, training, communicating, um, just the way that I work with people, that that's really what opens that door up. And so, um, you know, just, it, and it really is all just down to that communication. And so, you know, it comes back to the storytelling, honestly, it's like, hey, this is the story for the future, right? This is where we're headed. And, you know, if I can share my vision and get them on board, and help them kind of understand how they can help that that that's the thing right and we communicate every week right without fail we have a weekly meeting we jump on we talk through this stuff 
we make sure everybody understands how we're getting there and we just move ahead and you know that that's kind of the key to success i'm a vision guy i'm not an execute guy right the details that that's somebody else's shtick right and so i hire people that are good at that and then i make sure that we are communicating about what we need and how it works because i i have a lot of experience but i don't have time to do it all right yeah and i think that's one thing as business owners i've been in the same boat and that's what i've kind of told myself this year I'm not going to do it all. We've got to find the right people, get them in yep. place and then, you know, empower them to do the work that's there, but you know, have the systems in place that you know that it's getting done. Yep. My second question, Charles, for you is if you had a do-over, we've all had failures. If you had a do-over in life, what would your do-over be? You know, um, it's kind of funny because there are kind of some bright spots in my story where I'm sitting there going, yeah, I wish that had gone differently, but I learned a ton from, from those experience and I wouldn't change them. Yeah. Um, there is one within my business journey. There's one thing I regret. And that is that, you know, and, and I kind of messed it up and I'll, I'll just kind of give you some broad strokes on it. But um, when I started podcasting, I hired an editor, show notes, writer person, and she worked with me for like four or five years. And then we kind of got to the point where things had to grow beyond just she and I, right? And so we were discussing, you know, whether she was going to grow her business or whether I was going to grow mine, right? As far as team members. And it turned into kind of this argument that we were having about it, right? Because she wanted to hire people and charge me, you know, her basically her rate for their work. And I was thinking, you know, it, it'd be more cost effective and I'd have more control if they worked for me. But I kept going back and forth because, you know, I liked working with her and I wanted to make it all work. Well, eventually, um, one of the masterminds that I've been in for a long time uh, that I, I am just pulling out of now, um, we would post our discussions or at least the majority of our discussions as a podcast. And, you know, and so I brought up, hey, I'm trying to figure out how to handle this. And, you know, and one of the guys in my group immediately said, well, you just got to find somebody else. You know, you've got to fire her and find somebody else. And it really, it really hurt her. You know, it, it hurt, it hurt our relationship. Um, you know, she took it personally. And while that wasn't my intention, yeah, I wish I had discussed it in private with those guys, gotten their feedback right and and done things a little bit different there so if if there's anything that i could just go back and change it would basically be having that conversation privately so that at the end of the day um i could have made a decision and an informed decision and taken their advice or not but you know it wouldn't have been out there for this kind of a thing to happen and i don't know that i could have anticipated that that's where the conversation was going to go but I also understand why she took it personally that, you know, that I was essentially discussing our disagreements in a public forum. And so, yeah, that's, that's kind of the big one. Um, I've been through some other stuff that I think was more painful for me, but it was such a deep growing experience that I wouldn't change them. Yeah. And that's the thing that we have to realize, even on this experience, you've learned from that. Yeah. And mistakes, the people are so worried about failure anymore. That's part of the reason I'm bringing it up is really, yeah, we can have say we'd love to have a do over, but we learn from those and that's where we yeah. become better. And, you know, as chargers, that's one of the things I'm looking for them. You know, you can't dwell in the past, you know, but you can make that difference as you go forward each and every time. So I appreciate yep. you really sharing that and being open to be able to share that. Share it with them again. Um, I know you're on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. We're going to have all that in show notes, but share with them if they'd like to check you out as far as your website and um, you had kind of that call to action. Yeah, just go to uh, podcastplaybook.co slash charge podcast. Uh, we'll have everything set up there so that you can get that uh, starter. Uh, it's it's a PDF, the starter walkthrough for free. Um, and then, yeah, if you want help getting your podcast set up, I mean, I do all kinds of different levels of training and I'm happy to help where you need it, right? I mean, if 
if you want to go and do it on your own, I'm, you know, I'm happy to provide, you know, like I said, that, that walkthrough, but if you need more advice, if you need to learn how to grow, um, I did a, a podcast growth summit a few years ago. And so you can get all of the interviews that I did for that and things like that, um, are all available, you know, available kind of, kind of as a level up from there. So we, we do offer that, um, I'm getting ready to take the podcast playbook podcast and actually go daily with it right it'll be short but it'll be daily uh and talk about monetization and growth and all the things that we're talking about here um but yeah i i am rambling way too long mm-hmm. um if you want to start a podcast go to podcastplaybook.co slash charge podcast charles great having you on the charge podcast thank you for joining us today yeah thanks for having me this was fun chargers okay here's your action What is your market? What are you looking for? What would be best for you? Is podcasting in your future? Um, I'll be honest, it's a lot of fun having guests on and being able to share that information. It actually has made me, I think, a better speaker um, and Mm -hmm. made me where I can respond better to questions. Um, So when I'm doing my training, my coaching or speaking, I think it's actually improved things in that area. So I get personal benefits for it too. Plus I get to learn from all these great experts. So that's the other benefit that I receive from it. So remember, decide what works for you. Is podcasting would really make a difference in your business? And would it make a market segment that you could really hone into to really make a difference? So check that out and you decide if that's for you. And then we'll have all the information in show notes. So just go to chargepodcast.com and you'll be able to get all those links if you'd like to get um, Charles' information that he shared with you. Chargers, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here next week at the same time. Make it a great day. Max out, everybody. This podcast has ended, but your life doesn't just stop. To continue your inspiring journey, head over to chargepodcast.com and access all the tools and resources mentioned on today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, consider sharing with somebody who may also benefit from the advice provided. That's chargepodcast.com. Until next time, charge in business and life.